almost purposefully woolly language. And, mm. and there is, you know, again, it, I don't want it to seem like anybody that's going through, I've been through mental health struggles myself throughout all of my 20s. Like I, I really, really want people to understand that there is a conversation, understand that there is there are resources and there is help and all the rest of the things that you can do. So I don't want it to be like us lambasting it, but the main reason is that people feel like their emotions are a personal curse on them, right? I would, I'm mm. never, no matter how good friends me and you become, I'm never going to know the texture of your own mind. I'm mm. never going to know what it feels like to be Sirut, right? I'm mm. not going to know, when you say sad, do you mean what I mean when I say sad? When you say that you couldn't sleep because you ha you you were overthinking last night, do you are you overthinking at the same sort of pace that I am? Or just how visceral is the emotion? Are you sweating? Am I? Do you know what I mean? And this desire for us to feel seen, right, in a world that's very atomized and individualized, where the self is upheld more highly than everything else, and we're obsessed with our own emotions. In this world someone that posts something that makes us feel like we're not that this isn't some individual uh like custom drug that's been pumped into our veins to make us suffer oh it's just a part of the human experience that's me so that i understand the compulsion to pathologize and put a label on the things that we're feeling because it makes us feel less objectified by our own emotions less of a less of a victim of our own of our own issues it's oh i'm just just it's just you know it's what it's every look at twenty thousand likes on this instagram post like all of those people are too it, some of those some of those accounts are very clever about how they do it and they put things in a way that will resonate or will cast the wider widest net possible because um it, it, it benefits them um there's there's a couple of things there. So one, absolutely, when if you're struggling with something, and you find out um, that that you know this is this is something other people from suffer suffer from too. There's a name for it. It changes your relationship with the thing that you're suffering from. So imagine, for example, having the symptoms of anxiety, and your heart races, and you've always got you know butterflies in your tummy, and and your hands have a tremor and you're always worried and you know some of those feelings and you don't know what it is and you don't know if anybody else feels that way. I think it would be absolutely horrific. Um, and then you find out something called anxiety and then you find out, you know, why does anxiety form? What's the evolutionary purpose of, of, of having feelings like anxiety? And it, it can change your relationship to it. It can um, change the way you regulate and, and manage and respond to those feelings of anxiety. Um, and I guess the other side of the coin is taking every normal little <laughs> human emotion and attempting to, um, attempting to, I guess, label it and, and pathologize it. So, you know, some of the, the definitions of trauma on, um, online or in amongst Insta therapy, they're ridiculous. It's, it's basically just, they'll describe the human experience and say, this is trauma. Um, you know, do you ever, do you ever breathe? <laughs> have you ever seen the color blue? <laughs> you have trauma. Um, so it's sort of, I think what you said was, was really insightful because it's true. You, we don't like uncertainty. We don't like feeling, um, we're not very good at tolerating uncertainty or feeling that we don't have control over something. And so if you combine that, um, you know, ha having this emotional experience that that is quite difficult and turbulent, and you don't have you know a lot of control over it. You don't know if it's ever going to end. You you're not good at managing it. With having been coddled and protected to the point that you don't have the skills to cope or manage, and probably led to some of those feelings that you're feeling, and then you add to it this pop psychology culture that's telling you, oh, this is a legitimate diagnosis and nobody should ever make you uncomfortable and no one should ever, you know, um, criticize you or suggest that you have to take responsibility or you have a role to play in learning how to, how to deal with this or navigate this. Um, it's, it's far more convenient to say, I have trauma or I have this diagnosis or that diagnosis or the other. And it doesn't always lead to, um, changing a relationship. Sometimes it leads to, 
it becoming a bit of a crutch or it becoming your defining characteristic, you know? Um, like, what, my whole personality is having ADHD. Well, that's not, is there nothing else interesting about you? Um, is, is that it? <laughs> so, yeah, there's, there's a, a few different things there.